Hey, 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 all right, hey, this is, let me adjust the, the camera for, hey, Miss Diana, my Becky boo, thank you for tuning in, so I am on Instagram and Facebook, so give me a minute while I adjust ooh, my camera for Facebook. Okay. And it looks a little blurry, but we're gonna roll with it anyway. If you hop on here, make sure to say hello, hi. All right, so today is Wednesday, December the second, and we are on week four of our dreams, goals, and healing teaching series. I am super excited as always because I love what I do, but let me introduce myself before I get into what you have tuned into. My name is Adi, a love sign inspires. I'm an award-winning author. I am a healing and recovery accountability expert speaker, as well as coach and consultant. And I'm also the founder and creator of Healing is a Journey, a quarterly series of conferences that are designed to help those who've gone through trauma and abuse start to move beyond the trauma into their healing by providing them with tools, support, resources, and solutions. So thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to my Facebook family. Um, please let me know if you can hear the sound. Last week or two weeks ago when I did the teaching, there were some, some sound techni technicalities for Facebook. So let me know if you can hear me. Um, Instagram, if you can hear me, put a thumbs up as well, because I do not want you guys to miss any of this important information. Woo, woo, woo. So today we are talking about evaluating your mindset when it comes to dreams, goals, and your healing. I was asked um, probably about a week or so ago, what does healing have to do with? Thank you, Diana, for giving me thumbs up. I appreciate you. I was asked about a week or two ago, what does healing have to do with dreams and goals? And so I realized that a lot of times people who've gone through trauma and abuse don't even realize that they're still living in that space. They think because it doesn't bother them and that they moved on and that they are living and they are, you know, working and doing, you know, everyday things normally that what's happened to them has not affected them currently. But as someone who survived so much um, in my lifetime, I'm here to tell you that if you never address it properly, if you never seek out therapy, if you never start your healing journey, that all you're doing is covering up, masking what you've gone through with a Band-Aid. It's like you get a gunshot and instead of just going to the ER and getting the, the bullet removed and getting it treated, you just put a Band-Aid over it. And maybe the, the hole closes up and, and you think it's healed, but it has not because you have not removed what caused the bullet wound in the first place. That same thing goes with when you have not addressed the trauma that you have experienced, you are just masking it by going on everyday life and not realizing that you haven't started your healing. And so what does healing have to do with dreams and goals? Well, if you're setting dreams and goals for yourself, if you're envisioning a great life, if you're seeing yourself doing amazing things, yet you don't, you're procrastinating, maybe you're doubting yourself, maybe you just aren't setting goals that are obtainable, you're setting these goals that are like super high up there, but not looking at the smallest steps that it's going to take to get there. Those all, all those things can lie in unaddressed and unhealed trauma how so you say well procrastination really is can you hear me with Devereaux let me know if you can hear me please um and thank you for tuning in so procrastination is really anxiety meeting fear plus doubt where you you know you have to get something done but instead of actually taking the steps to do it, you make excuses. You find everything else to do but what needs to be done. Sound is low. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Let me turn the sound up. 
Let me get closer to the mic. Is that better with Deverell? Um, and so instead of actually addressing what needs to be done, you make excuses. You find every reason not to do it. And so I have come to learn that a lot of things start in the mind. Your mindset is so, so important to what you're trying to do. And so today we're going to talk about evaluating the mindset when it comes to dreams, goals, and healing. And so one of the questions that I put up in the title was, are you just, are you existing? Are you living? Are you, are you just having wishful thinking? Do you really love the life that you're living in? And it's a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder. I have to try to see why my mic isn't picking up the sound. Thank you for letting me know where I appreciate that. Um, so one of the things that I come to find a lot of times when people have not addressed the, the trauma and the abuse that they've gone through, that they don't really, um, love the life that they're living. Now, granted, it doesn't mean that every single day is going to be rosy. For example, I was having a talk with my son this morning and he shared with me that, oh my, I can't wait for Friday. Um, and I'm like, well, today's on Tuesday. You're looking forward to Friday already? It's like, yeah, I love the weekends. I get to relax. I get to chill. I don't have to go to school. And so I had a, a talk with him, just an encouraging talk. And I said, well, you know, because I know adults that are like, can't wait till the weekend, got the case of the Mondays. And we are looking at certain days in our lives and, and not living in the moment that we're looking forward to certain other things. And so I kind of talked to him about how I shifted my mindset of, not just looking forward to the weekend to enjoy life, but trying to enjoy life every single day, trying to experience life on a moment by moment basis. And I even went as far as to tell him that there is no such thing as a bad day. It's really moments that you've had that build up a day. So sometimes if you don't address the first moment that went wrong, and you don't acknowledge it, and then other stuff starts to happen, then you just feel like the whole day is just bad. And so one of the ways that I have learned to just not, um, to not really look at the, the bigger picture of like everything is happening wrong, but looking at the smaller moments is living in the moment, finding something positive to do within each moment. Well, how did I achieve that? By shifting my mindset, by looking at it in a, from a different point of view. And so Sometimes it's not that easy to always shift your mindset if you are have not dealt with the things that have happened to you. But in reality, I, I have learned and I have come to understand that being transparent and being real with myself first and acknowledging the things that I, maybe my shortcomings, maybe certain things that I don't really want to deal with, but I need to, has helped me to shift my mindset by acknowledging who I am, what I've gone through, things that I want, hope to do better. It allows me to not only work towards improving it, but it also allows me to set higher goals, to dream bigger because I'm acknowledging like, okay, this is where I fall short, but here's what I'm going to do to, to kind of rise above that, to go beyond that, to make sure I achieve what I want to achieve. And also another thing, don't sell yourself short. Well, a lot, oftentimes we we minimize how amazing we are, right? We say, we think because we don't have certain um, accolades, maybe certain amount of money in our account, maybe degrees, whatever you think you might be lacking, stop selling yourself short. If you're dreaming big and you're hoping to do amazing things, don't sell yourself short by, by looking at what you, your so-called shortcomings. How do you expect anyone to believe in and what you believe in or believe in you for that, for that, as a matter of fact, if you aren't even believing in yourself, right? That's like me telling you attend this conference. I guess it's going to be okay. We might have some good speakers. I don't know. Just see. You'd be like, well, why should I attend this conference if you're not even excited about it? If you're not even happy, if you're not even sure what the conference is going to do for me, right? You have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in the work that you're doing. You have to believe in your dreams, even when it seems bigger than you. I can tell you and testify that the, the most scariest moments in my life is when I have a dream that's bigger than me, that's like bigger than the resources I have. And it, it causes me to have to work 
just a little bit harder to be a little bit more uncomfortable to be able to shift my mindset and to also address some things from my past that might be trying to spill over into my present how many of us deal with that where where our past is spilling over into our presence and call it our presence and even messing up how we see our future we oftentimes look at our future through the lenses of a shattered experience and I say this time and time again, sometimes we're looking at things through a shadow experience, through the lenses of abuse, through the lenses of trauma, and not really giving ourselves a chance because we've already counted ourselves out. Well, I'm here to tell you, our mind is the strongest muscle that we have, yet we don't exercise it enough. We don't use it to our full capacity. We oftentimes don't allow ourselves to do what we need to do in order to be who we need to be and it starts in the mind right if it's the strongest muscle in our body why aren't we using it why aren't we, we utilizing the, the the gifts that we have our thought process because we are who we believe we are we are who we think we are we can do what we believe we can do i i want to encourage you take some steps to strengthening your mind Stop scrolling through social media endlessly and pick up a book, read an article, start to learn some things, start to unlearn some things. Maybe you have some bad habits you need to unlearn, undo. It starts in your mind. We also must understand that our trauma has residual side effects when it comes to how we think, what we say, what we believe, and our actions. And so I want you to start really looking at what do you say about yourself? What do you believe about yourself in your life? What action steps are you taking to maybe move differently? Or are you just complacent and used to where you're at in this current moment? I also want to encourage you, if you have not started to seek help for what you've gone through, as you know, I'm a big believer in faith plus therapy, God plus therapy. Go and get a, a, a good therapist, someone you can talk to, to deal with what you've gone through. Because the only way you can move beyond the trauma is to address that it happened and start your healing. And so I want to leave you with three tips that will encourage you and hopefully help you on your journey of healing, dreaming, setting these goals, and evaluating your mindset. One, censor what you think. Really pay attention to what you think on a daily basis. Journal it. Write it down. Take a, take a note of what you think on a regular basis. What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your situation? What are you saying about others? Number two, monitor what you watch, whether it's on TV or social media, and what you listen to. A lot of times we don't even realize that we're being, impact, we're being impacted by what we are watching and listening to on a daily basis. Number three, check your beliefs at the door of your faith. Figure out what you believe and why do you believe that? Is this something that you believe because of what your mama, your grandmother, and everyone before you believe? Is this something that you believe because of it was the only thing available to believe in? What are you believing? Check your belief at your faith. If you don't have any faith, get some. Because this, you would need that on your journey of healing. And so before I close out on this teaching, I also want to let you know that our upcoming conference, December 19th, tickets are still on sale. Super excited because I got three amazing speakers. This Friday on my Facebook Live, my Facebook business page, I will be going live at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for our Facebook pre-show. I have two of my panelists. I will be doing the pre-show interviews so that you can understand why they decided to, to say yes and be a part of the conference, why you want to attend the conference, and what would you what would you be getting from this conference, right? Also, we'll be doing a live raffle, so you definitely want to show up and show out. Set your alarm clocks this Friday, December the 4th at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Also, I am... For Giving Tuesday, all this week, I am offering a 15-minute complimentary coaching session. Go to my website, www.lasignerinspires.com, and then click on the tab that says Less Work. You click on that, it will direct you to my calendar. Set up a time with me. 
sometimes we don't even realize that we need some additional help. We need some accountability. We need someone to walk us through this thing. So let me be that person to walk you through. Uh, and that, last but not least, donate, donate, donate. Yesterday was Giving Tuesday. And so our nonprofit partner, Not By My Own Community, which is a nonprofit that helps women who are domestic domestic violence survivor start to go from surviving to thriving by finding wholeness in Jesus Christ, giving them resources and support and tools. They are in direct alignment with what we do here at Healing is the Journey because they are also helping individuals walk on their healing path. A percentage of all proceeds from the Healing is the Journey conference ticket sales goes to not, not by my own community. Go to my personal page on Facebook, click the link to donate. Every little bit helps because they're still accepting donations to help and continue the work to let these women find freedom and find find support and just all the things they need to go out get out of their domestic violence situation and start to thrive in the world. And also, last but not least, let me tell you about the swag bag goodies. So I got some amazing sponsors this year. I'm super excited. Um, and so I'm gonna just show you that and then I'll be signing off. So one of our sponsors, TGIN. You will get TGIN products. You will get the sample products in your swag bag. Suja Juice. They have organic juices. You get a buy one, get one free coupon. So Chic Accessories. Cute little pearl earrings. Now, gentlemen, if you want to attend the conference, I want you to understand this conference is not just for women. Men need healing too. And if you purchase a VIP ticket and you get this in your bag, Give it to a lady in your life, whether it's your mom, your girlfriend, your sister, who knows. But don't be discouraged from, from wanting to buy a ticket because you think this conference is for women. It's not. Men and women alike need healing. We have all have experienced something and we need that healing from it. And last but not least, what I'm also excited about is Booty Bands is a sponsor as well. And they, will, they have given the Booty Bands. So this is a four pack. I'm just show you the different sizes and the different strengths. But in the VIP package, you would get the purple one. So get your tickets today. They're still on sale. Um, also, with both general admission and VIP, you will get the replay link of the conference. So after the conference is done, you can still watch it over and over again. Rewind, take notes, you know, look at some key points that really hit home. You will also get a downloadable dreams, goals, and healing worksheet. And so I'm excited. I hope to see you there. Make sure you share, share, share this video. Remember to be bold, be you, and be unashamed. Love you all. Blessings.